reading vlog time for the end of the week and I'm very excited because I love doing these reading vlogs because there's only one rule, no editing allowed, I just talk and upload it right away so <laughs> this is going to be fun. Okay, before I go any further, I want to give a massive shout out to one of my most amazing subscribers who has just been commenting on so many videos lately and I just feel so much love so I want to return some of that love back to you in the form of this video and that is Super Doc Mario. Mwah! Thank you so 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 much for your beautiful comments in my midweek reading vlog I was asking you guys whether you think I should do more than one reading vlog a week and Super Dog Mario you were saying the more vlogs I do the better so this reading vlog is dedicated to you if you would like a shout out in my videos then just leave a comment on in these videos and I'll shout you out in them Okay, so before we go any further and discuss all the books that I have read for the first week of June, can you believe we're in June 2021, I'd like to put up a poll. Now, YouTube no longer allows you to put those little polls up in the corner, wherever it is, it's one of these two corners anyway, and so I'm just going to say the poll verbally to you guys, and just comment in the space below and let me know what you think. So, last night... Somehow, it kind of just felt a little bit, I don't know, serendipitous, I suppose you could say. I ended up doing a ton of research on a an incredibly famous Australian by the name of, and I hope I don't trigger anyone by saying her name, the name of Chappelle Corby. Now, for those of you who don't know Chappelle, in Australia, the news was massive, so you should know her, but if you live somewhere else around the world, you may not know of her. Basically, to give you a neutral, unbiased idea of what occurred, Chappelle Corby, uh, with her family, went on a trip to Bali. When she arrived in Bali, one of the things she had on her was a, a like a bodyboard bag, and when they went to inspect the bodyboard bag that she had bought with her, inside that bodyboard bag was 4.2 kilograms, which is what we measure here, here in Australia, of marijuana. Uh, this is something that could come with a death penalty in Bali, at least it could at the time, I don't know if it can these days. So Chappelle was taken to Bali jail and there were a lot of things that came about after uh, that whole thing went down. Chappelle has said that she was innocent from day one and maintained her innocence since then. Now, uh, I did a ton of research on this last night because it just came up and I wanted to do some research on it. And what I found out was that Chappelle has actually released a book, a memoir that she's written herself. And part of me was really intrigued to read this. However, we have a law in Australia, I don't know if it's the same around the world, where authors or really criminals, I guess you could say, criminals cannot benefit off of the crime that they did. So Chappelle in Bali was found guilty. Now, whether you believe Chappelle was guilty or not, my personal opinion, I don't think she was, but you know, whether you think she was or not, the law is very black and white here in Australia. If you're found guilty of a crime, you cannot profit off that crime, whether you actually are guilty or not. So anyway, she's released this book and I don't know where the money goes to. So if I were to purchase this book, I think it probably goes directly to the government. I don't know. But what I want you guys to vote on is should I read Chappelle's book? If you think I should, let me know yes, and if you think I shouldn't, let me know no, or let me know why, if you have strong feelings either way. I am considering it for next month, so let me know as soon as you can. I would really appreciate it. Let's jump right into what I have been reading this week. Now, I mentioned this in my, uh, midweek reading vlog, so I'm going to just go over this incredibly quickly. The first book that I read this week was The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna. This is a book about a girl whose name I have forgotten... Decca. Okay, had to think for a moment. Named Decca, who's part of a tribe. When the girls turn 16, they are pricked to see what colour their blood runs. If it's red, they're fine. If it's gold, they're executed. Uh, our protagonist's blood ends up running gold, so... Yeah, they want to execute her. Things end up happening. I did not like this book. I really did not like the writing style. I gave it two stars, but I speak a whole lot more about this in my midweek reading vlog, so feel free to check that one out over there. I just wanted to make a point in my weekly wrap-up that this is the first book that I read for this month. 
So what did I move on to next? Well, the next book that I moved on to, I went into that book with a little bit of trepidation after what had happened with the Guild of Buns, because I was really excited to read the Guild of Buns, and then to come out as disappointed as I was. I was like, oh, I don't know. And, but I picked it up anyway, and it was this book, Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. Did I love it? Did I hate it? Did I think it was okay? I love this book! Oh my god! It was so fantastic! Oh, what a way to bounce back! This book is marketed as an adult sci-fi, but there are people out there who say that it is more of an adult thriller slash sci-fi. I would agree with that. There are certainly a lot of thriller elements to the book, and I do feel that sci-fi is there, but it's more of a side genre, but I absolutely love, love, love this book. So, basically in this book, we're following a man whose name is Jason, and I don't want to give away too many spoilers, so what happens is Jason ends up having an interesting night in the first chapter. The night concludes, and when he wakes up the next day, it seems like he's in his world, but then he goes home and finds out that his house has been completely redecorated, and what's this? The message on his answering machine, it's his voice, but it's not his message, and where's his wife, and where's his child, and oh my goodness, it is so, so, so good. You guys, I had so much fun with this book. Now, if you have seen the film... The Cube. I love the Cube trilogy. I watched it last month. I don't really talk about films anymore on this channel, but I was watching... I love psychological films these days, so about a month ago I watched the Cube trilogy and loved them. If you love any of those films, I think you will love Dark Matter because some of the similar... There are some similarities from that film in this book. Anyway, if you've heard of the term the Tesseract, that is actually included in the book as well, so... Yeah, I thought this was just so, so, so good, and I highly, highly recommend this book, especially with any type of a thriller. You don't want to say too much, because it could be a spoiler, but, oh my gosh, this was just so much fun. I will say the first chapter, or at least the beginning of the first chapter, is quite mundane, but I feel like that kind of happens with any type of thriller, whether it is a book or a film, because you're just establishing the characters, or at least the main character, and, and who they are, and the type of life they lead. So, yeah, you, you come to understand that. But from chapter two on, we end up having this amazing ride, and it is just so good all the way through to the end. I will say one thing that doesn't give anything away, but it will give you maybe another reason to read this book. This is one of those books where you think you've gotten to the end of the book, and then something happens and you realise, oh no, there's still more to go, but in such a good way. Because I was reading this book and I thought, oh, okay, there we go. We made it to the end. I like this book. And then, oh boy, no, we're not done yet. Yay, let's keep going. So, yeah, it's one of those situations. So do be prepared for that. But, oh my gosh, I love this book. I had to give it five stars. It was just such a fun book to read. Now, I will say, at least to begin with, for the first chapter or two, I needed to get used to Blake Crouch's writing style because it's different to what I'm used to. In saying that, unlike what I was saying about Namina Fauna's works in The Gilded Ones, Blake Crouch's writing style, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just something that I wasn't used to. So I just had to get used to it. But once I was used to it, it was an amazing ride and journey for me. I highly recommend this book to anyone who's a fan of thrillers. As I say, I feel that this book is marketed as an adult sci-fi. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. But definitely, uh, it has a thriller tone to it. And there are certain mysteries that you try and work out along the way. Like, what is this? How is this? Why is this? You know, things like that. Um, yeah. I just, I had a lot of fun. I highly recommend this book. I know that Blake Crouch has also written Recursion, and it has been on my wish list. My wish. My wish. Indeed, my wish. My wish 
list <laughs> for a while now, and uh, I am hoping to purchase a copy of Recursion at some point, especially now that I've read Dark Matter and that I can say I love Blake Crouch. I'm hoping I'll love Recursion as well. But Dark Matter, I gave it five stars. It was just fantastic. Oh my goodness. I'm... I'm I'm just going to say you need to read this book. Now, if you don't like heavy sci-fi books with heavy sci-fi terminology and heavy sci-fi themes, don't worry. This is not a heavy sci-fi book. No. I honestly, I feel like it should be advertised as an adult thriller because it's more of a thriller than sci-fi, but I can see why it is categorized as a, or why the genre is sci-fi because there are sci-fi elements to the book but they don't take over the book in any way, shape, or form. In fact, if you're going into this book because it is a sci-fi, you might be a little bit let down, because the sci-fi elements do take a backseat to the thriller aspect of the book, so please do be mindful of that. But this was a wild ride, and I had so much fun. Five stars, and I highly recommend Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. And what does that say? The international bestseller. Well, I can tell why. <laughs> I can tell why it's an international bestseller, because it's amazing. In fact, we have kind of these, like, one-word, um, uh, what do you call it, little things that people say here. Um, we've got Lee Child, whoever that is, I'm sorry, I don't know you, uh, saying it's brilliant. We have Andy We Are saying that it is exceptional. We have Harlan Coben, or Coben, saying masterful, and Justin Cronin saying that it is mind-bending. Absolutely, I agree with all four of those things. Highly recommend. Do yourself a favour and, and read this book because, oh my gosh, just incredible. Okay, let's play a little bit of a game before I grab my next book that I started. And let's call it Having a Bit of Fun with Mr. Francie. Alright, I want you to go to a room where there are books in it. Whether it's your room or another room where you may have a bookshelf or you may just have a pile of books. Alright, I want you to go to this room. You in the room? Okay. Count to book number five. Pull it out, and in the comments below, write the title and the author, and tell me if you've read it and if you loved it or not. Something random, something fun. Now I'm going to have a sip of my drink. Oh, thank the angels for coffee. Seriously, because coffee just keeps me going. There's nothing better than a caramel latte. <laughs> okay, let's move on. My third book, I started it, you guys. Oh my god. So, I was telling you guys in my midweek reading vlog that I had told a friend of mine that I was going to read three books this week, and then I realized that my schedule was not permitting three books, it was only permitting two, but I got, I loved uh, Dark Matter so much that I got through it so quickly, which allowed me to get onto book number three. And if you've seen my TBR for this month, you would have seen how much I have been waiting, I'm waiting, to get on to this book. It is One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. Oh my goodness. I did not check this out, so don't quote me, but I'm just going to go off an assumption that this book has been on my TBR for the last three months. I honestly don't know. But anyway, for one reason or another, I keep missing this book and not reading it in that month, and it's annoying me that I keep missing it, even though it's my TBR and I could have read it. I could have just tossed aside other books, but I just didn't, for whatever reason, let it go. <laughs> um, but I've been so intrigued by this book ever since I first found out about it, because this book has been kind of likened to Pretty Little Liars, which is a TV series that I absolutely love, and I'm also currently reading the book series. In fact, uh, I don't have them on me right now, but the books that I'm reading after this one is going to be books four and five, respectfully, of the Pretty Little Liars series. So, there you go. But yeah, one of us is lying. The basic premise of this book is that we're following uh, four characters who, I can say this now that I've read the first chapter, who are in detention. Well, there are five characters that are in detention. And, okay, I'm just going to say this because it's in chapter one, so it shouldn't be a spoiler. One of the characters who uh, has a peanut allergy somehow consumes peanut oil and... <clears throat> Excuse me. And he ends up ha um, going into um, some kind of, I don't know, whatever he goes into. He has the allergic reaction, and 
the other people that are around him, the students, are trying to find his EpiPen, but they can't find one, so they go to the storage cupboard, the first aid storage cupboard, to find out there are no EpiPens there either, and so he can't be saved. Unfortunately, he dies, but there's more to that scene than apparently meets the eye, and we're trying to work out with the four remaining students which one slipped him the peanut butter oil that killed him. And... At the moment, I'm really enjoying my read with this book. Now, currently, I am there, which is 78 pages in, so not that far, but I am way ahead on my reading schedule. I'm like two days ahead on in reading, so as far as my calendar. For those of you who don't know, Mr. Francy is very Mr. Pedantic when it comes to his scheduling. I have a makeshift calendar that I put up in Microsoft Word, and I will literally divide each book throughout the course of however many days there are in the month, down to the point where I'm uh, dividing up how many pages of each specific book I'm going to read per day to make sure I get through each one. I wasn't meant to be starting One of Us is Lying until Monday. Today is Saturday. I am two days ahead of schedule, which is fantastic. But I'm loving this book, and I... Oh my gosh, you guys, I literally have a notepad next to me while reading this book, and I'm writing these notes down because I'm trying to work out who the killer is. I don't know if they intended to kill the kid that died or not, but let's just simplify it and say killer. Try and work out who the killer is, and oh my gosh, it's been fun to try and work this out so far. Now, thrillers, uh, which I'm going to call this a thriller, I'm pretty sure it is. It's a YA thriller, I think. Uh, thrillers are all about the reveal at the end. Who did it? How did they wrap it up? Was it done well? Were there any plot holes? Anyone else out there seeing Pretty Little Liars? Anyone else out there thinking plot holes is a word synonymous with Marlene King? Let me know in the comments below because it just takes me back to so much scarring with Pretty Little Liars. But moving on, <laughs> um, yeah, so I know that the reveal is what my rating will hinge on with this book, but in the meantime, I'm trying to be that detective and trying to work it out for myself, and it's been a lot of fun. These characters that are the four suspects are incredibly diverse. We have a character that is so intellectually, um, you know, smart, so, so very smart. <laughs> anyway, could have said that in a much easier way, but... Moving on, we also have a jock athlete who is, I think, a footballer or something like that. Don't quote me, but he's a, an, a jock athlete. And then we have a, a girl who was a, like a beauty queen or a pageant queen or something. I don't know. And then we have another one who is very, very smart. She's trying to get into Harvard, so she's trying to pull up her grades and maintain, uh, well, because her grades started slipping, so she's trying to maintain her grades at being an A-grade student, or she was. Anyway, it's been a whole lot of fun. I'm really enjoying this. So far, I can definitely see the whole PLL vibe. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen Pretty Little Liars, seen it or read it, Pretty Little Liars can be shortened to the acronym PLL, which is why I'm saying it that way. I can see how this book gives you PLL vibes, definitely. Um, teenagers at a teenage school, mystery, whodunit. I can definitely uh, tell the PLL vibes in this book, but I'm loving it so far and having a lot of fun with this book. So at the moment, I'm really enjoying it, and I'll update you guys when we get to my midweek vlog next week as to what I thought about it. I think I'll probably be done uh, with this book by then. And then speaking of PLL, I'll move on to PLL books 4 and 5. But you guys, I've had a very interesting week. So time to wrap things up and do our last minute one more poll with you guys. So we have the Gilded Ones that I read first in week one, gave it two stars. Dark Matter I read second and gave it five stars. And One of Us is Lying, of which I'm up to page 78 and loving it so far. All right, my final poll for you guys for this video. We have a number of polls, so going to be interesting to see what you guys say, is would you like me to review any of these books, and if so, what is your priority with them? Now, just because I didn't like The Gilded Ones doesn't mean I'm not happy to do a review. In fact, I love doing rant reviews where I get to explain reasons why I don't like a book, so I'm happy to review this one if you want me to. Or, on the opposite end of the scale, we have Dark Matter, which I gave five stars to, so... I'm happy to do a raving review of how much I love this book, or a rant review of how much I despised this book, or I can do a two-in-one, 
where I review both of them in the one video. Uh, now, also, uh, in this poll, please let me know, uh, and also you can uh, vote on this one, One of Us Is Lying. If you vote on this one as the priority, then we'll just wait for me to finish it, and then once I finish it, then I will do the review on this one. So, do you want this one? This one? This one? These two? Or these three? Let me know. But there's also one more thing that I would like for you to vote on, and that is, with the book or books that you are voting for me to do reviews on, would you like them to be spoiler-free, spoiler-filled, or spoiler and non-spoiler reviews? Let me know that in the comments below as well. But that is where I am going to leave it for today. Letting you guys go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll see you again soon. Mwah. Thank you so, so, so much for watching, and happy reading!